Hey guys, and welcome to episode 196 of the OCDstories.com podcast. Now, this episode is a bit different. It's not specifically OCD focused, um, but I wanted to do a few more episodes on other things people can do if they feel like it as part of their recovery. Um, so one initiative I came across is sort of mental health gardening uh, and one specific project in West London in the UK is called Mind Food. Uh, now, Mind Food run um, courses for to help people improve mental well-being. Um, so, as their website says, na- nature-based courses for anxiety and depression. Um, so, they do do these kind of six-week growing well-being courses where they take people with different mental health conditions and they help them uh, through gardening and community and kind of connection with nature and they bring in various things like mindfulness into that. Um, so I was fascinated by this model and they also run, um, so anyone can come along on the weekend and take part and I went along uh, to do some gardening which I, I thoroughly enjoyed kind of getting my hands dirty, um, you know, learning how to grow things, uh, which is something I've never been great at. So that was great to kind of build that skill to just chat with others where there's no pressure and uh, and just have that community. And then after, have some tea and some food that had been grown in the garden, like a watermelon and we had mint tea. So that was really cool to kind of have that connection to nature and the earth. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to do an episode just to explore this. One, if there's any um, mental health gardening initiatives near you, I know there's a few in the UK and maybe there's others in the States, Canada, Sweden, wherever you're listening to this. Um, If there's not, maybe it's something you could be inspired to maybe start one up. Who knows if you really enjoy that sort of thing. Um, Or just as an episode to just maybe spend more time in nature if they want to. Whether that's walks in nature, whether that's uh, doing gardening in your own garden or someone else's. Um, There's many opportunities to volunteer in this world. I'm sure many people need gardeners. Um, But whatever it is... um, Hopefully this episode kind of inspires you if you're wanting to spend more time in nature. Um, So firstly, I interview Lucy Clark and we recorded this outdoors. So you may hear other background noises. And Lucy Clark is a project manager for Mind Food. uh, And I I ask her all about this initiative, these types of mental health gardening initiatives, what are some of the benefits for it, what people may experience if they do it. Uh, Then I interview Jess and Jess has been on the podcast before. She has actually interviewed Chrissy, so she was a guest host uh, a while ago, so you probably heard that one. Um, And Jess has done uh, mental health gardening at a different uh, project, which is down on the south coast of England. And uh, she just talks about from her experience having OCD and what that was like being around others with different diagnoses, you know, getting her hands dirty, learning to grow stuff and uh, how that helped in her recovery alongside her CBT treatment for her OCD. So yeah, without further ado, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it inspires you. Um, Yeah. And here is Lucy and then following Lucy will be Jess. Mind Food is a not-for-profit that runs nature-based courses that support people to manage and improve their mental well-being. With me is Lucy Clark, who is a food and well-being grower at Mind Food. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> it's good to have you on. Um, and I always like to hear people's stories. So in this case, it could be your own mental health story or your story with Mind Food. Yes. Well, I, I discovered Mind Food about four years ago. I'd been working for. 17 years in the same job I was doing food pro- product development mm-hmm. so working on new products to go in, uh, into a supermarket and um, you know first 15 years super enjoying it thriving yeah. on all the stress and the deadlines and then the last two years clearly my brain had had enough yeah. <laughs> I, ke- I I burnt myself out once and work was super kind about the whole thing yeah. and then I went and did it all over again so I thought right uh. this time I've really got to take notice so um, I thought before going back to work I would uh, try some volunteering and I found a little project called Mind Food that had just uh, come to Ealing and um, it was all about food growing and help with stress and depression and I thought mm. oh, that could be the thing and within three weeks of coming to Mind Food I just decided 
decided I never wanted to work inside ever again. (laughs) And so I guess I'm a bit of a nature evangelist because I just, um, it was such a revelation to me. Um, And so I started training in gardening and uh, social and therapeutic horticulture, which is helping people with gardening. And yeah, the rest is history. So I've been uh, doing the food and wellbeing uh, grower job for a couple of years. And it has been amazing. I just meet so many interesting people. I think the good thing about busy thinkers is they've always got plenty to say and really interesting things to say so yeah. it's been great <laughs> yeah absolutely and you know i've partake partook today in mm. the gardening and uh you, you know i found it very easy to get on with everyone to get on with you and you made it easy which obviously coming to someone like this especially someone with anxiety it's yeah. potentially going to be scary but you yeah. made it not scary it's um it's a funny thing because i think nature does an amazing job for Mm. just i mean particularly it's i mean it's so beautiful it's just such a beautiful day today as well but generally that gives us a bit of a head start uh people are feeling like oh it's not that bad after all because for a lot of people that come to mind food just that first step out of the house is really the biggest step that's true um and i can remember what i was like when uh when i first came and then i think what's really exciting is that um people instantly find quite a lot in common because first of all they realize that they're not that different uh Mm. from uh everybody else uh they say one in four people in the uk will struggle with some sort of mental health difficulty in a year in london it's one in two are more anxious than they feel comfortable with so i always say Mm. when you come here chances are you're going to feel pretty normal actually because you're just one of a growing band of us that are honest about the way we feel which is sometimes not that great so yeah so I think generally people you know you're doing the gardening so you've got a common purpose Mm. and you're all just understanding of how it feels when your brain's not doing what you want it to yeah (laughs) so yeah I I think that's um, how it goes really yeah no thank you for that That, that's that's great Um, and you obviously describe what mind food is but Mm. just in a a bit more detail anything you can share about what you do here yeah so what we do is we uh, run a kind of program of courses so we have a six session uh, course called um, growing well-being Mm. and uh, we take about 10 minutes at the beginning of each session to cover our well-being theme so that might be uh, the five ways to well-being I don't know if you've ever heard of those yeah. the five ways so uh, they're the habits of uh, people who consider they've got good well-being so they're things that people do naturally to, to feel a bit better so we have a little look at those then uh, we do things like mindfulness mm. uh, and more fi- for, sorry more formal mindfulness, mm. mindfulness uh, like a guided meditation so we do a bit yeah. of that uh, we do well-being planning where you look at your day and yeah. see how you can balance the ups and downs uh, a bit about nutrition and uh, and about your brain as an ecosystem which is quite a good mm. one and then we all go off to queue for a nice free visit to the gardens um, and people uh, learn it we spend most of the sessions just doing gardening mm. always make time for a nice cup of tea and um, people yeah just generally just come here as I mean uh, one one of the girls who is here today, she she said, "This is like my happy place," which is so sweet. Yeah. Uh, but actually, people really use it as an escape because um, you know, even when they've had a rubbish week, they know that you know they can either talk about it or not, and and that's fine, really. Mm. So yeah, it's it's it is a nice thing to be involved with because there's lots yeah. of good stories <laughs> yeah no absolutely i love oh, that yeah so yeah. basically once they've done the six sessions then they can come on doing uh, and do growing with us just for as long as they like cool you know sort of more informal plot to plate course and then we also look at um goal setting uh in uh, a course that we call sustainable well-being and uh, goal setting is such a hideous word because mm. it's so work related yeah. um so really it's like the anti-goal because it's a goal that's all about you and about making people prioritize their own well-being mm. and actually there are very few moments in life where you're forced to put yourself first yeah. and actually generally people who come to see us uh, are incredibly hard on themselves so quite often conversations will be around uh, you know, did you get to your goal? No. Was there, you know, say for example, somebody said they're going to uh, try and get to bed earlier every night, but mm. some uh, old friend came to stay for three nights, so they didn't manage to do it. That's not a reason to beat yourself up about no. not doing a goal. That's a fantastic excuse yeah. and probably needs celebrating. <laughs> so, yeah, generally it's, it's not a sort of grueling, have yeah. you done it sort of thing. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, just a bit of fun, really. Cool. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> and And I guess why was it started? 
So it, it's a project that's evolved. So it started about eight years ago, and originally it started up in Amersham, mm. uh, so out of town, and it was um, growing on a sort of more uh, traditional farm, um, and it was growing for uh, to sell produce on the market, and it was about helping people with severe and enduring mental um, uh, illness uh, to have a productive, um, you know, day. Mm. Um, and so they did that for a while, but actually it's, it was quite a, I guess it was quite a tall order, uh, moving everybody out to the countryside yeah. to do a day's, you know, growing and then get everybody back in. And actually we realised that there was a more immediate need uh, to help people with common mental health um, difficulties like stress and anxiety and depression, mm. um, burnout. And, um, and so that's really what we focused on. Yeah. It means that you get to see people on a journey, which I think is quite gratifying as well. That's true. Um, but actually, we're incredibly inclusive. So we still do. Uh, we've had uh, people who've uh, come to us for six sessions if they've got uh, learning difficulties. We've had people recovering from stroke. Mm. Uh, we've had people um, who are completely deaf. We've had a couple of um, deaf people and blind people. So basically, the idea is mm. we can find a way for you to to garden and enjoy nature yeah. that's our responsibility you know you all you have to do is come here and enjoy it so, yeah yeah so it's quite it's nice to see such a mix of people all the time hmm. and i think good for everybody else um yeah <laughs> yeah no i love that and um you you've, you've listed some benefits but good just to hear whether it's what you notice or what people have said to you about what they really kind of get from it well, I think the first thing is people are really struck by how non-judgmental we are, which is it's mm. it's worrying actually. <laughs> and, and actually, before I joined uh, my course, I was worried that you know I people weren't really talking about mental health, and um, and I was also worried it was going to be a big sort of therapy session yeah. where I'd have to delve a lot into my own thinkings, mm. and that's not really the point. So. Um, people just like that they can just come and be themselves um and they love just uh learning about gardening in a very informal way and i think what i really noticed is as people kind of tune into nature mm. they get more and more involved in it and so um a lot of the people that started off just doing one of the sessions they actually might end up doing three or four sessions a week with us so yeah. almost accelerating their well-being and then some of them are branching out into more artistic and creative endeavors and finding new hobbies and you know mm. things to get involved in and um so so that's a an, another big thing is you know just I guess well, there's no pressure on anybody to become best friends on day one or anything. That sounds hideous. But um, people do develop um, friendships over time. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's rewarding for loads of reasons. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, generally people just like uh, no pressure to do anything. If, if people just want to sit and just be here and mm. have a cup of tea, frankly, I'm, I'm not, you know, that set on getting people to do huge amounts yeah. of hard work i mean that's there's <laughs> plenty of that out in the real world um yeah. but yeah the biggest step for people is getting out of the house um and isolation is a big uh problem so mm. generally mind food is about you know whether you're uh, bereaved or you've become isolated or you've been long-term unemployed or if you're a refugee um actually at the point at which you're able feel able to make that first step back into the community mm this is a very good place to start because um you know it just helps you adjust and practice yeah. your social skills in a completely unpressurized environment and what we find about gardening is uh, as you're pottering away um it's quite easy to have very informal conversations with people it's quite a big thing to you know look into somebody's eyes and have a you know full-blown conversation i don't know hmm. i know they say that that's the best way to have a genuine conversation but i don't know about you but it just terrifies me yeah. to like sustained eye contact <laughs> anyway as we're you, doing now yeah i know yeah. i know i'm literally just making myself anxious just yeah. doing that but um but yes it's just uh it just means that there's no no pressure really they say yeah. that um for example you know the best time to have a chat uh with children is in the car when you're both looking forward uh, yeah. uh, and it's a little bit like that when you're gardening it's if you're busy That's doing true. the weeding or planting or something it's just enough enough of a distraction probably just to be the real you 
Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely felt that today. Uh, and something else I noticed for me personally mm. was uh, I think I had this narrative in my head of I'm bad with uh, gardening. You know, I, I spend yeah. a lot of time in nature, but as a gardener, I just have this belief that I kill things. Or I tell you, so, supermarket yeah. herb plants, are they've got a lot to answer. Really? Because they, just, <laughs> they die pretty saying, quickly. They die really quickly. Yeah. And it, they just leave people with a feeling that they can't do gardening. And you only yeah. need to look around you to see how well generally nature does when mm. it's just left alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, frankly, unless you're going to go out of your way to mess it all up, which there yeah. are also plenty of people who are you know, happy to do. Generally, you know, mm. nature's a pretty forgiving thing in terms of That's human, uh, you know, contact and yeah. involvement. So, yeah, so for us, it's just about having a bit of a play. I mean, I discovered, when I discovered gardening, I realised that I got exactly the same feeling as when I was probably about five or six and pottering around the garden, mm. making mud pies. Yeah. Uh, you sort of feeling like you've got your own little purpose, but it doesn't mm. really matter, you know, outside yeah. of the garden. <laughs> and it's exactly the same. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah, so I guess it's really most about just getting people to have a go so yeah. quite often we'll try growing vegetables that you know we've never tried before so we saw um sweet potatoes growing in kew mm. gardens we thought anything kew can do <laughs> yeah and um so we've had a go at those yeah. in the polytunnel and as you saw today we um cut open our first watermelon yeah, which is a little delicious. bit of exci- excitement uh, but yeah literally it's seeing how things grow and mm. I've, I've no idea how it's going to be when we dig up those sweet potatoes it's yeah. um it sounds like you've got a lot of american and listeners and do we, do, yeah. we just um yeah i guess we don't we don't do much sweet potato growing in the uk oh, and no. so there's going to be a little bit of a journey of discovery <laughs> for us and um so yeah um but yes yeah, so, yes and also um finding and foraging things uh, mm. to eat has been quite fun okay. we'll, occasionally we'll go up onto the hill and see what we can find mm. uh, they've we've hosted some fairly popular foraging sessions oh, cool. but yeah just keeping people alert and learning something new because you yeah. can never know it all <laughs> no that's true um <laughs> yeah and i think we you know we just had tea just now after sort of an hour and a half of work and mm. you put the fresh mint in that you'd mm. grown here and the watermelon that had been grown and mm. You're just more connected to what you're consuming. It's not yes. just something you picked off a shelf. One thing that we found is that um, people who come to uh, Mind Food, it's generally because they're already eating quite mindfully because they're wondering where their veg has come from yeah. or at least are a little bit interested to see, you know, how it appears. And um, it does lead to a lot mm. of food conversations. I mean, uh, there's a lot of recipe swapping that happens okay. and, uh, and uh, there's generally you know, food around and to yeah. be savoured, whether we've uh, bought it, made it, dug it <laughs> up. So, yeah, so that's mm. quite quite good. Um, yeah. Um, so I guess it's just another common subject for people. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, all right, what's next on my... So, yeah, so I guess how can people support Mind Food? So I guess... In terms of supporting it, I would say it'd be great if you came onto our Facebook page and liked us. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, we're very lucky, actually, because we're funded by Ealing Council. Oh, cool. uh, we've got a big, uh, well, a four-year uh, community grant uh, mm. where um, we report in all of our outcomes. And uh, we, in our six-session course, we measure people's well-being with a recognised scale. Yeah. And then uh, they get to the participants do that again at the end of the six weeks and we're able to mm. demonstrate that we're making a difference yeah um so that we're very very lucky to to have that and we've got several other funders as well mm. uh we're soon to become a charity so people cool. uh, be able to um you know donate, donate. And, stuff, yeah. and um but uh in terms of supporting yes just like us on facebook and twitter and we've got a one of our um mind food participants we've mm. recently kind of recruited two of them one to be another food cool. grower yeah and to run sessions and also um some pro a program support uh coordinator and she is a social media whiz a natural one that mm. <laughs> doesn't recoil from it like i do and uh, so yeah instagram will all be over nice. be all over instagram um and if you want to if anybody wants to get in touch and they're in the 
uh, well, basically in London. We don't just narrow ourselves down to mm. um, to Ealing Borough um, because until we're massively oversubscribed, we'd rather just help anybody who's That's interested true. in coming along. Yeah. So, um, and then it's just a matter of getting in touch with us at info at mindfood.org.uk and I'll be at the other end of the email, mm. so nobody needs to worry about that. Ideally, it's great to get um, a telephone number because then I can kind of um, break the ice. Generally... Um, people will, if they're given our telephone number, they'll never pick no. up. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't either, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so what normally happens is I'll give somebody a call and obviously they won't answer the phone because it's a number they don't recognise. Mm. And I, again, I wouldn't ever do that either. So, um, so yeah, so then it sort of turns into, you know, I leave a message, I'll back it up with a text message and gradually we'll get a kind of texty conversation going mm. until the stage where we can actually have a phone conversation. So quite a lot of work goes in yeah. up front to just make people feel like they know someone already at the other end yeah and then we always make sure we give people lots of directions although mm. i feel like we need a bigger <laughs> banner at the front gate yeah. to stop people uh, disappearing off with local running groups yeah sort of thing. There's, there's a couple of us too <laughs> yeah uh cool no thank you for that um i mean the reason for doing this is a, even if people can't get to this one, I know there's more and more of these initiatives popping up. Absolutely. And I would say um, <coughs> if you look out for community gardens in your yeah. area, although um, you know you might not be getting any sort of formalised um, support, mm. um, it's a brilliant way of supporting, or, of basically borrowing somebody else's green space That's true. in a generally very supportive um, project. Yeah. Uh, you'll... Um, people who get involved in community projects are generally very welcoming yeah. and are keen to share um, their uh, knowledge and experience and sort of welcome you in so I mm. guess it's a, li a little bit kind of going with the flow really yeah. and just taking a plunge and um, we're always very keen to say to people just give it a give it a go if you don't like it it really doesn't matter yeah. you know maybe it's just another thing the important mm. thing is to keep on trying different things and it might be that if you try one community garden and you're not made to feel you, you don't feel super welcome well just find another community exactly garden yeah. because they there will be the garden for you and the more um at home you feel in green mm. surroundings the more uh you'll you know be able to participate in you know conversations and activities yeah. and you know that just has a ripple effect really um mm. and uh yeah it'll it'll take you places you never thought you'd go plus you get a ton of free stuff yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Free one food. of the things that we like doing i mean we do free veg yeah. people get to take that home but also you know if a weed in somebody's garden could be a beautiful flower in your garden mm, so <laughs> you know there's usually or maybe i mean we say uh, it's, uh horseradish is incredibly invasive mm. so we're generally digging up tons of that that could make your sunday lunch one yeah, day with true. your with your roast beef or your yeah. you know uh you know your baked potato or whatever so there's usually you know mm. something going around and a particularly you know life is so expensive in cities uh, mm. just to get the odd bit of free stuff people yeah. find disproportionately rewarding yeah that's <laughs> very true cool well uh, thank you for talking about that mm. i have two more generic questions yeah, now okay. so uh, if you could pick up the phone and call your 20 year old self Oh, okay. what would you tell her? Oh my God, just stop trying so hard. I used mm. to take myself so, so seriously. I feel yeah. sorry for myself actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I was incredibly conscientious. I was really studious at school. Yeah. Um, I think I had classic middle child syndrome. Okay. Even though my parents couldn't have been fairer, but apparently we all, you know, tried desperately hard yeah. to, you know, uh, you know, conform and I uh, yeah I just was really really studious uh, but I think even at quite an early age I was very um, yeah just was always very stressed and sort of distracted and I don't know I just couldn't sort of settle and I do love learning so mm. part of it probably was me driving myself yeah. a whole lot as well but yeah if if I had got gardening then I think it would be a, or, or tried mindfulness then that hmm. would be brilliant because actually you only need to do 10 minutes of mindfulness a day to feel like you're on top of the day yeah. and or for me anyway and yeah. that could have saved me so much aggro yeah. um, it's funny I was having a conversation with somebody the other day about um, 
you know, just banishing stigma. Uh, the stigma wasn't really about mental health, but for under 30s, it's about trying gardening. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the real stigma we're talking about, yeah. here, which is having a go at gardening. So, uh, um, but yes, I, you know, I wouldn't have been able to contemplate yeah. gardening at the age of 20. I would have been appalled. So I don't think That's I would have listened true, to myself. It? Yeah. <laughs> it's either farmers or old age pensioners. Yes. Yeah. yeah no, I revel in it. It's something my granddad used to do. Yes. Yeah. And, and actually, we find that. Um, uh, particularly people who come from outside London or outside the UK, they have a much closer connection with nature because mm. they uh, come from more rural um, or agricultural backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a much more obvious shortcut to feeling better for mm. um, people than, you know, if they've lived in London their whole yeah. life, really. I think in London you tend to feel like you have to choose between city and nature. Yeah. Uh, but one of the projects I've been involved in is um, the campaign to make London a national park city. I don't oh, know if cool. you've ever heard no. about that. So officially we're a national park city yeah. now. And it's um, a campaign that recognised that London's 47% green. Oh, wow. And yet when you ask people what the colour of London is, they'll all say yeah. grey. And so the, the difference must be just slowing down and looking mm, going in search <laughs> yeah. of these places yeah. so seeking them out and you know there is tons so um yeah so there's there's yeah just slowing down so that's how i would, would yeah. have, i would have told myself just just cut yourself some slack yeah sit on a bench yeah. <laughs> lap up the green <laughs> yeah love it okay and then last question is you've got a billboard in yeah. uh, ealing let's say what do you want written on it Hmm. Oh my word! It could be a very long silence. It could be a very busy billboard. Hmm. Um. I think there is something about practice. Practice stopping, or hmm. you know, when was the last time you stopped? Yeah. <laughs> or I don't know. I'm not very billboardy. I guess I'm more of a foundation layer, <laughs> sort of slink into the shadows. Yeah. Um, but um, oh, I don't know. For mind food, I. I think one of our biggest things to communicate is that we're free. Mm. We're, we're, we've got no waiting list at all. Mm. And why would you wait yeah. to feel better? Well, you know, what's stopping you, really? Mm. Um, and I, beyond that, I don't know. I, I literally would be picking people off the pavement and <laughs> say, come, come and yeah. do some green stuff. Um, yeah, billboards, yeah. I guess we haven't really contemplated billboards. It's not really in our budget. No. <laughs> It's like Not yet. <laughs> um, thank you. And is there anything like parting words that I, you wish you could have said that I haven't asked you? Mm, I don't think so. I think when I uh, was invited to do this, which I never said thank you so much oh, for inviting nice. me, um, I was wondering about, you know, I don't know the hugest amount about um, OCD hmm. and and it intrigues me and the whole sort of anxiety sort of aspect I guess I understand anxiety pretty well, and there's mm. obviously a huge amount of anxiety involved yeah, in there OCD. Is, yeah. And again, I can only think that it's um, the sort of common ground is helping people slow down. Yeah. Um, but I'd be very interested to find out more about projects. So you've got a sort of camp, a camp thing, yeah. which I just think sounds amazing. Although I cannot mm. imagine, as somebody who you know, until a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have been able to imagine camping myself. So, mm. yeah, it's a bit intriguing. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it sounds a really, you know, exciting project to get involved yeah. with. Um, yeah, no, I don't think so. So it's been brilliant to have you over. Yeah. And, you have um, you know, I don't mind admitting that I was a little bit nervous about being interviewed. And you've mm. also made me feel very at home. So thank, <laughs> thank you. you very much for that. Uh, my pleasure. <laughs> thank you for your hospitality today. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Jess. Hello, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to have you on again. Um, and obviously you interviewed Chrissy, I think, the last time you were on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, so. Now, yeah. yeah, it was. I'll link in the show notes to that. Um, but yeah, so obviously got you on to talk about mental health gardening. Um, so yeah, when, when did you start doing some of that? Uh, I started gardening quite a while ago I used to do it to be, to be honest when I was a kid I used to do it with my nan a lot mm. um so I have a lot of like good memories um of gardening um and then I think yeah when I sort of moved back into a house that had a garden maybe like five years ago um 
we sort of built a vegetable patch and a greenhouse so I started growing like things from seed and really enjoyed that um, and then I got quite poorly uh, last year and kind of stopped doing my own gardening um, and then I was yeah at home a lot wasn't working and my friends were sort of trying to find things um, that would help me in my recovery and sort of get back on my feet and start doing activities again uh, and one thing they found was something called ecotherapy um, which is um, a centre down in Brighton uh, which is close to where I live and you basically can go there and do anything you like like anything you feel you're able to like any sort of gardening uh, weeding, planting, and the the idea behind it is that there are other people with mental health difficulties there, um, and the sort of aim of the whole project is to promote recovery and also like community social inclusion, um, and then there are volunteers there that are sort of trained in supporting people with mental health. Yeah, so that's how I recently got back into gardening. Nice, thank you. Um, yeah, what's your experience of being it, being at it? I guess you know the first time you went, and then you know after being being there for a few months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first time I went, I was mentally in a very uh, like dark place. I was very suicidal at the time, so it was hard to make really hard actually to make that first step to mm. go. Like, I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't want to see anyone. Um, but I'd kind of got to this, this point where I knew I had to do something and it was quite nice because it was away from where I live. So, you know, there wasn't much chance of me like bumping into anyone that I knew um, and it was something completely different. No one knew me. No one knew my past. No one knew my problems. You know, you you had no pressure to like talk about anything or tell them anything. You literally just turn up and garden. Um and I've forgotten your question. What was your question? It was just about the first time you oh, went yeah. and then... Yeah. yeah, so um, yeah. So the first time I was really anxious um, and a bit sort of reluctant to do it. Um, but I'm really glad I went. I um, It was very, like, very welcoming and, and it was kind of the atmosphere was very relaxed like it was um one lady who sort of introduced me just to this little like plot that we had um it wasn't overwhelming she didn't sort of go around and like introduce everyone there was no pressure like to you know talk to anyone else at that point it was more about she was focused on me and you know something that I could do to keep my mind busy and to sort of ground myself so um yeah anxious at first but quite quickly settled in um just started doing some really basic weeding digging um didn't sort of talk to many people at first um and then on that same session um because how the sessions were structured is we did we turned up we did a few hours of gardening and then we'd harvest some of the fruit or veg or whatever from that season. Mm. And then we'd do um, have like a fire um, and make sort of like a soup or a stew or something. Um, so, yeah, that that day I then stayed for lunch and then sort of got talking to a few people. And, yeah, it was nice because I, I felt like I might have to talk about my experience, what was going on. But there was just no pressure around that at all. It was literally about where you are right now what you like what you're doing and then the just talking about the food and the garden and stuff so yeah and then I sort of went from doing really small things on my own to then like wanting to work with other people and doing sort of like tasks that needed two people um to sort of taking you know a bit of a lead on some things and planting things from seed and yeah slowly my like independence and confidence grew over like the sort of five months that I went for yeah oh, that's cool and mm. what was it like being around uh people with other mental health difficulties that weren't OCD and different diagnoses 
Yeah, is that that I really actually uh, enjoyed that experience. I think um, because you know, I think mental health is such a broad term, mm. but everyone like at the group, you could always relate to somebody. You know, if they were talking about something, there were so many similar experiences, whether it was anxiety, depression, like a personality disorder, there were always things that you could kind of have in common. And also, you know, seeing people at different stages of their mental health recovery. So you had some people who had, you know, uh, years and years of being in recovery and then we're sort of continuing to work on it and you know having those ups and downs and then you had some people who were very poorly and, and coming in and then seeing them sort of get better over the like over the weeks that we were there it 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 kind of inspires you I think to to maintain your recovery or to start it or whatever stage you're at but it also really validated any experience that I was having so there was no pressure to be okay there was no pressure not to cry there was no pressure like you know to be happy that you know it just felt very like a really accepting environment where you could just be you and it, you didn't have to put a face on if you know what I mean yeah no absolutely mm. um no thank you for that and you, you started off you listed a couple of benefits there but yeah what what did you mainly get out out of it or what did you learn or how did it help yeah um I learned so much that was one thing I, I didn't expect to learn as much as I did from the time that I was there you know I learned about different types of soil and what you could plant in what um how to sort of grow things from seed and like the different stages and when to sort of put them in bigger pots and uh like loads of names of different trees and sort of how to look after them and yeah just loads of like actual gardening knowledge that I didn't have or didn't know that I would kind of learn um because lots of the volunteers have been gardeners for like years and years so there was just everyone knew everything which was amazing um so in terms of like and because I wasn't working I was missing out on that like learning part yeah. um of life really so it was really nice to go there and to learn some new stuff because it kind of kept me motivated to keep going and things so that was one thing um being outdoors was just amazing like I really noticed the more I went to those groups the more I then would come home and want to get back outdoors straight away mm. so before whereas I'd be in the house a lot and sort of you know sitting around and not really doing a lot I would then sort of go home and then think oh I really want to take the dog for a walk now you know even yeah. though I've been outdoors all morning it was you know once the weather got nicer and stuff I just wanted to be outdoors all the time and started working loads on my own garden so yeah it sort of really helped me get out I guess get out of the house um so that's one other thing um physically it was really helpful as well because I like you can do I mean you could do anything but one thing I quite liked doing was like digging so you know you're you're also getting like the physical benefits of it and releasing those endorphins which helps your mental health as well um like mindfulness was another thing that I enjoyed about it like we'd all sort of sit around the fire and just be quiet and watch the fire and have a cup of tea and um you know have food and it was it felt very grounding you didn't I didn't particularly obsess about things that I would have been obsessing about at home because I felt sort of removed from it and in this sort of safe space of I'm here right now and that's kind of what I can focus on um and then the last thing which I really sort of have carried through really is like the sense of community that I got from it um just turning up to the sort of same place every week with you know similar people and everyone was sort of working on a particular project and they were really passionate about it so you know we had the fruit and vegetable plot and it was you know a massive sense of everyone's going to contribute you know in some way to this and then we get to harvest it and then we get to eat it and like yeah that was really amazing and then there was another project running where people would design sort of like small areas of the land and then we'd all work on 
you know, building. So there was like a Buddhist meditation garden being built and there was a uh, like an outdoor kitchen for one of the youth groups being built. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of that sense of lots of people doing something together mm. to help themselves, but also to help other people. Yeah. yeah something I really enjoyed nice thank you yeah good list of benefits um so what would you words of advice would you give people who maybe have access to one of these mental health gardening schemes near them um but maybe hesitant to go or 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 another way of uh, asking that question is yeah just what you would have wanted to know before you started Yeah, um, that's a good question. I think I would have wanted to know that there wasn't um, pressure to talk about your mental health. Um, There wasn't pressure to talk about how you were feeling that day. You know, it was, if you felt able to, it was encouraged because, you know, talking can be very therapeutic. It didn't have to be, it wasn't like you sat in a group and went round and said how everybody was. It just wasn't like that. It was much more relaxed, laid back. Um, so yeah, I think I would have been less anxious if I'd known that. Um, also that everybody there is in a similar situation. I think when you're struggling, you can feel very, very isolated and like you're the only one going through that particular thing. Um, and I very quickly learned that there were so many other people struggling in similar ways. Um, and that was, yeah, it's that sort of feeling of it's like a feeling of going home like you kind of feel accepted instantly um yeah and then i think yeah just the whole relaxed atmosphere i didn't expect there to be as little pressure as there was like if you wanted to turn up and sit by the fire and just sit by the fire for three hours you could do that there was you know no commitment required you didn't have to go every week um and there was no time limit as well, which I really liked because obviously some services, um, you know, you can sort of go to six sessions and then sort of had your thing, which obviously has to be the way for sometimes because of limitations. But yeah, with, with the gardening groups, I know that it's usually sort of a drop in service. Um, so you can kind of come and go as you want. And, you know, sometimes I would not go for four or five weeks and then turn up again and it was like I you know had never not gone so it was very yeah just very relaxed and very yeah an accepting environment to be in yeah no that's good to hear and the one I went to in London kind of similar to that there's no Mm. pressure Mm. Uh, it was super friendly and Mm. accommodating yeah Um, yeah yeah I think everyone there's just really friendly and very passionate about what they're doing they all love being in nature you know and yeah it's just being surrounded by nature and um being able to focus all your attention as much as you can on something that's real and that's in front of you is yeah i found it extremely helpful cool no thank you for that uh i got two more questions which are unrelated to this topic so is there anything else that you would add on this yeah so i would just say that because I know there's not a massive number of these garden mental health garden schemes out there, which is a shame. Um, but there is something I came across the other day called Green Gym, uh, which is you can look it up online and you just basically look it up in your area. And it's not mental health focused, but it is sort of well-being focused. And it's basically a group of people in the community who uh, want to look after a particular area so it might be a national park or you know a forest or something and they meet i think it's once a month or something um as a group anyone can go along and then it's similar stuff like you can you know clear areas do some weeding like it's basically it's basically the same but maybe without as much of the mental health support Mm. but if that's something that you're sort of interested in and looking for then i'd kind of recommend trying one of those out yeah. cool yeah is, is that the same sort of group that sometimes they go for a run and they pick up litter as they go yeah i think it's sort of like that i think it's um a bit different in that there's not as much like physical demands mm. like it's you sort of walk to an area okay. and then do a bit of clearing have a cup of tea and then go i think it's yeah, yeah. a bit like the gardening group but more focused on a on a like 
area of a community that needs maintaining yeah, yeah. cool now that's a good suggestion as well um and yeah the two examples your one and the interview i did before this um uh, mind food is obviously uk focused but i'm sure there are other initiatives globally yeah um, and if not gardening is something we can all do to, to varying degrees or yeah uh, yeah yeah exactly and you know there are lots of allotments out there now and i know sometimes there's community allotments that you can just sort of go and help out at you don't actually have to commit to paying for your own allotment and stuff so yeah there are some good things out there cool all right brilliant um and then so uh pick up the phone and call your 20 year old self what would you tell her (laughs) oh god um This one always gets me. I think I would say that, like, it sounds cliche, but it does get better. Like, I never, ever, ever believed that, no matter what anyone said. Um, And I, last year, really hit rock bottom and then have completely sort of lifted out of that. by no way do I think that, you know, it won't have its ups and downs, but in terms of the, you know, treatment that I sought out and the work that I put in, I would say like to myself that that work is hard and horrible and sometimes feels like torture, but in the long term it is so, so worth it. And I I would do it again if I had to, yeah. Yeah, good advice. And you're referring to uh, ERP there, CRC. Yes. yes. Cool. Uh, so you got a billboard. Uh, what do you want written on that billboard? <laughs> uh, I don't want to write too much on it. Um, okay. I would... I think I would write your mental health matters because I think people are starting to talk about mental health more and it's you know becoming more of a priority but I think there's still a really long way to go in terms of society accepting it as something that uh, everybody has to work on to some degree you know whether you have a diagnosis or not we all still have to look after our mental health just like we do our physical health Mm. so yeah i think i'd want people to kind of just be aware that it's out there and yeah cool all right brilliant well thank you so much for your time and uh, sharing your experience no problem so there you have it thank you for listening i hope you found it interesting and a bit different from the usual episodes uh, thank you to lucy for her time and for mind food too so um, the links to mind food will be on the website theocdstories.com and also thank you to jess for sharing her story and her experience with mental health gardening and quick disclaimer guys this podcast is not therapy it's not a replacement for therapy please seek treatment from a trained professional until we speak take care